What do you think, uh, a lot of people have not, uh, who, who are squash enthusiasts may not have seen women's squash, what do you think they would be um, surprised about or enjoy about it? Um, I think they probably enjoy the amount of balls that women can get back in this sport and the uh, intensity of the rallies and just seeing the athleticism of the uh, players. I think they'll uh, be, it, be surprised by the, the uh, amount of skill involved as well and, and it's a very mental game squash and definitely got to be a strong character to, to stick in the game. Yeah. Um, what do you think, uh, is there anything that you can uh, say which separates the very top players from the rest? I think, I think probably um, there are <clears throat> physical um, differences, they are you know, slightly fitter and slightly stronger, but I think the main thing is their mental attitude and how um, the, the uh, players that are strong in the head always seem to come through and they're definitely all in the top ten. Which uh, WISP events are your favourite ones? Well, this one now, of course. Um, this one has been absolutely brilliant in terms of uh, the way we've been treated and looked after. Um, Qatar's always a good tournament because uh, we're very well looked after there, stay in lovely hotels, the weather's great, um, everything's free and Hong Kong's another good one as well because everything's so accessible. Do you prefer uh, billets or hotels? Um, I was thinking that this week and um, I, think, I think I used to be more in favour of hotels but if you get great billets like I've had this week then it, it makes it so much easier and you know you get driven around and you get fed and it's all it's all, all good so at the moment I think I'm more more in favor of billets. Looking back over uh, the, 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 the squash that you've uh, seen and played what was the do you have any funniest or most bizarre experience? Um, last year was probably the most bizarre experience I had a, a BSPA um, in Wimbledon which is close to my hometown in London and um, I played a Ex uh, former professional player Rebecca McRae, and um, we had a real argy bargy match. And she's known for not being the most pleasant on court. And um, at one point in the uh, match, she actually squared up to me and called me a word that I won't repeat in front of a large crowd. And um, that was extremely bizarre. And uh, couldn't couldn't actually believe what was happening at the time. So looking back on that, it's quite a funny story. What about uh, I had heard that. Um you played a match where you uh, won the third game going up 2-1, but the, uh, the player had forgot she won the first. And uh, Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this week, obviously, yeah, that was a very strange experience as well, to think that your opponent thought you'd already won the match. I, I wish now that I'd have actually turned around and shaken her hand and <laughs> hopefully could have won the match. But What was your uh, sweetest victory ever? Um, probably winning Iceland last year. I was seeded three and um, I ended up beating the number one seed in the semi-finals after being two love down and then went through to win the final 3-1. So that was that was a really good feeling. Very good. And uh, is there a most painful loss? Yeah, there's been a few actually. I can't really think of uh, any to hand. But the British Open actually a few weeks ago I lost to... Um, NG Kerala in the third round of qualifying after playing two qualifying matches already and playing pretty well and I really thought I was on form for a good win and I ended up losing 3-1 and I was pretty down after that. What about uh, last night's match? That can't have been easy when you looked definitely like you were yeah. uh, almost out the door. Yeah, again, that was uh, last night. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's all too recent, I think. So I was thinking back to... Um, sort of uh, within the last year but yeah last night will definitely go down as probably one of the most painful losses as I was three points away from winning the match and two two actually <laughs> yeah two points and um, yeah six three when I felt my conductor go it was a real horrible feeling and uh, yeah you did manage even though we could all tell that it uh, wasn't going your way you managed to get to seven six and serving there yeah does it make it does it make it better does it make it better or um, worse that it wasn't actually your play but uh, just a, a physical No, accident? it makes it far worse. If, I, if I'd been losing and I was too loved down, um, <clears throat> you know, it would have been a lot easier to accept if I'd had to have retired. But to be two points away from winning a match and then having to retire is, is an, an experience I've never had before. And it's gone down as one of the most awful experiences in my professional career. 
well, uh, all the fans are for you. And, uh, and, yeah, and, we, I got, and we, I got we all that saw feeling. what that yeah. was like. So. Yeah. So is there, um, um, what's, your, what's your real goal, uh, your, your future goal for squash? Um, well, at the moment, I'm just so determined to get my, my ranking back up in the teens. I was eight, up to 18, it's dropped to 23. Um, tournaments like this are absolutely ideal for me at the moment if I'm going to get to the final because uh, the ranking points are good for my ranking. And uh, I've got a tournament coming up in France, the same value as this in a few weeks' time, and if I could get to the final or win it it would be an absolute real bonus at the moment so just basically to get up to the top 16 level I'd be really really happy and what do you see for yourself after your squash playing career um, well actually I'm uh, in July doing a course to be a personal trainer it's a 12 week course and uh, I've always been very much into going to the gym and sort of looking after myself food wise and into massage and I'm doing a 12-week course where I'm going to be learning about all these things and hope, hopefully passing on this information to other people, uh, not so much other athletes but just general public who are keen to get themselves in shape. So after squash, that's definitely what I'd like to do. And will squash be part of that? Um, yeah, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think that I'm going to stay in the game and, um, and, and, and give back what I've been given. Yeah, I think that would yeah. be very good. Okay, well, thank you very much, Dominique Claude Walter, thank for uh, doing the interview and coming to our tournament. It was very fun meeting you, and we'll hope to see you next year in thank fine you. form. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let's click that off.